Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to do a Halloween inspired pour with Deco Art Paints. I wanted to show you this finished pumpkin that I had done the other day. People asked me, did you pour on a real pumpkin? And I said no, but you certainly could. But this is a plastic one I got from Michaels. It's good forever. Here's the dried results. And I sprayed it with the clear uh, engine spray. Uh, I had bought some and never used it. I was going to use it for tiles and then I thought I'm not using it on tiles because I'm just going to put resin on tiles if I want to seal them. So I thought this will be great to put on this pumpkin so it can sit outdoors. It is in my Etsy shop and it's available. But people were asking about the runoff, which I totally forgot to put a canvas underneath my pumpkin. So I wanted you to see. I did it on a puppy pad. And this will peel off in one whole piece. I can cut it up into many pieces. I could use it in a mixed media collage piece, jewelry making. Uh, but it's got some beautiful patterns. And with puppy pads, you can't pour on the cotton side. You have to pour on the plastic side. So it will peel off of the plastic. So this is going to be used for maybe many future projects or maybe in a large collage. Who knows? So I went ahead and pre-mixed everything and I'll tell you really quickly what colors I'm using. Everything is going to be mixed. Probably two, two and a half parts Oetrol Easy Flow. I just happened to have some and wanted to use it because I do love the quality of it really better than I do Floetrol. But you can most certainly use Flood flow troll. Oa troll is thicker. It goes further with your paint. So like if I did one part paint, one part Oa troll, I could add water, which typically I don't add water when I'm using flow troll to deco art craft bottle paints because they're fluid. With Oa troll, you still have to add water because the Oa troll is so much thicker and richer. And it also dries more of a satin finish. So I have mixed up jack-o'-lantern orange, honey brown with a little bit of cadmium yellow because I wanted it to be kind of a golden maize color. The red is true red. Metallic gold is outdoor living gold. It's not 24 karat gold but it's a beautiful metallic gold. This one looks like Hershey syrup when it's warm and yeah, you pour it over uh, ice cream or whatever, but it's actually called antique maroon. The next one is Georgia clay, which is a really uh, rusty color. And then of course lamp black. Let me just remind you that anytime you do pours, they're always, always going to dry darker. And just to, you know, give you an idea, you see how much darker that label is compared to the wet paint in the cup it's going to really dry more like that. So that gives you a clue as to how deep it's going to dry. Now, when you put a glossy varnish, it will pop that color back a little bit, more like it looked when it was wet, but it is going to dry darker. I'm going to mix one color for you. And these are in a little three ounce-ish uh, silicone. They're flexible. Things just kind of peel out really easy out of them. So especially the resin. I love to use resin in these. But um, I love them because they're flexible and you can use them over and over again. This is a metallic and it's antique bronze. So it's kind of like the Rich Espresso but maybe a little softer. More muted. I've got one part metallic. I want a full cup of this. I'm going to do at least one part Oetrol. I'm actually going to go more like almost one and a half to two parts Oetrol. So you can add more Oetrol or Floetrol as you do paint. It can be equal parts. Typically I do one to one, but you can actually put in more of the pouring medium, which is the Floetrol or Oetrol. Oetrol is a European brand, but it is my Amazon link below my video. And um, it takes, with Oetrol, it takes a little longer to mix it up. I always tell people to make sure and scrape your stick, scrape the sides, 
and can continually scrape for a while and it's going to always look paler versus what color it looks like inside the container. It's always going to look paler but as you mix it will get deeper and deeper when that paint conditioner mixes in with your paint. So this is way too thick. I wanted to show you the consistency too. That's why I saved this one for last. Metallics are always thicker, richer, heavier because of the metallics. You always, always have to add water to metallic paints. You don't always have to add water to regular colors in the deco art family, but because I'm using Oatrol, I do add water. So it really kind of stretches your paint and Oatrol further. So you get more bang for your buck, even though you're paying more for the Oatrol. You get way more paint mixture because you can add way more water to get the right consistency. So this is still too thick. I do little squirts at a time. My water is one one part Oatrol or Floatrol to nine parts water or 10% Oatrol or Floatrol to 90% water. So what happens is when you add a little of that into your water, it just mixes into your paint mixture easier. Just makes it easier to combine everything more efficiently. But you always, you don't want to add your water to your paint first and then your Oatrol or Floatrol. You want to mix your paint with your medium first and then add your water at the end. The water is kind of the, the gauge for what, where you want your consistency to be. So that is perfect for a metallic. You want a little bit that lands on the top because it is heavier. So let me show you. So the this maize golden color. It kind of lands on the surface and kind of sinks in pretty quickly. So that's you want all the consistencies about the same, but your metallics are always going to be a little bit heavier. So I've got these colors. I'm just wanting fall Halloween colors. I got these online. They're thin. They're about 12 inches across and about 9 to 10 inches from the top to bottom. And they're made from Baltic wood or birch, something thin. So not super thick. So I base coated them with black. And so what happens when you're pouring on raw wood, it brings up the tooth of the wood and it makes it kind of scratchy feeling and um, uneven. So then I sanded them. So I painted it, let it dry, and it was kind of rough feeling. And then I sanded it until I got it fairly smooth. Did that with all three. So I, this was a three pack. And if these do well and don't warp, I will put the link for these in my Amazon recommendations. Now, if they warp, I'm not going to recommend them. I don't like to recommend something that I would not use myself. So I've got a couple of cups underneath. I don't have it taped on the bottom because if I, if these work out pretty, I'll just paint the other side black or leave the fingerprints. I figure I'm going to need about five ounces for a pumpkin and that may be too much, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. And then my other question, I don't want to put silicone in these. I wanted to just really just see what the colors would do that by themselves. I think maybe that might be the order I go in. I don't want, I really didn't want white in this. So I think that'll be a pretty good order to pour in. Like I said, this will probably be more paint than I need.
So it's got some cell action going on just by having, you know, probably the metallics in there. try to drag my finger around and get drips. It just helps keep the paint from pulling off as quickly. If you can get some of those drips. I don't think I even I don't think I even used the heat torch on this. All right. wanted to do a tree ring. I don't know. What do you think? We might as well just go for it, right? To find some of that darker some dark back on that stem right there. I always say if there's an area you don't like, do something with it. These were fun. So the question will be if they warp while they dry. So I'm almost done with my black gloves. I've gone through almost a whole box. I'm not any more famous. So, that must not have anything to do with the black gloves, huh? <laughs> That's a joke. I got green gloves coming next time, but I got a few, a couple pairs of the black gloves left. I wanted to show you, these are pop sockets, and they have a 3M sticker on the back, and you can pull them out. One, two and they stick on the back of your phone and you can use them like a holder, you can prop them, that kind of thing. So, I want to show you. See if I can do it without making a mess. I've tried dipping them and they end up kind of looking all the same as far as stri uh, just a certain pattern. So that's why I thought it might be fun to just use a palette knife. And kind of direct the paint onto it. But not enough to go over the edge. So I hope you enjoyed my Halloween pumpkin wood cutouts pour. I will post pictures of the dried pieces at the end of the video. I will let you know if they warp because they're so very thin and I've poured on almost inch thick wood that warps after you pour on it. So it depends on the the kind of wood and everything like that. And whether you've used sealed it, which I didn't seal it, I just put the acrylic black paint on it. We will see how they do and I'll post it at the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. 
Click on the bell in the bottom right for notifications and check out all the links below the video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.